In this video, I'll talk about how to distribute your survey, how to send it out to people so they can fill it in for you. I'll talk about the steps that you need to do leading up to distribution, how to get your survey link, and in future videos, I'll talk about some additional things you can do when sending your survey out to people. So let's talk about getting our survey ready to get out there. There's a few things that we need to do first. Let's go into look and feel. I showed you this right back in the first video, and this is where we can set some things up to make it easy for our participants and to change how our survey looks. If we want to get rid of the CQ logo or we'll put our own logo in, say for a lab, something along those lines. Um, there's some things in here that we can also set up like, do we allow them to see a progress bar of how far they are into the survey? And I would suggest doing this. Now notice here as well, we've still got question numbers uh, available and we've got a back button available as well. Not here because it's our first page, but we'll need to turn all those off as well. We can do some other general settings here. We could add a footer, say with your email address, if you wanted people to contact you, if they had a problem with the survey, for example, you could add all of that in there too. So I'll click save, I've added a progress bar. People like that, they like to know how long they've got left. I'll go into survey options, I'm gonna turn off the back button. I don't want people to be able to change their responses once they've given them. I will turn off showing the question numbers. Now, I might make it by invitation only, or I might make it password protection, but what I would suggest doing is this thing called prevent ballot box stuffing. And what that does is it stops people taking the survey twice. If you're offering, offering a prize draw, for example, with your survey, then you will have people who will take it multiple times to give them more options. You can also flag potential bots, and I have had a couple of surveys hit by bots from time to time. Um, now, there's one more thing down here that I want to show you, and that is what happens to what we call partial completes. Now, if someone stops taking the survey halfway through, let's say they get distracted by their kids running around or they've just had enough for the night, they can come back to the survey just by clicking on that link again. And if they're on the same device and on the same browser, they'll come back to the point that they stopped in the survey. So they don't have to start from scratch again. But if they do start it on a different device, or in a different browser, then they will start from scratch. How long do they have to resume? Well, that depends on what you say here. You could give them a week or two weeks or four hours, however long you want them to be allowed to be an incomplete for. And then you wanna think about what happens once that week runs out. There is an option to delete all option uh, uh, partial responses here, and I would suggest never doing that. I would suggest always recording partial responses. You can't necessarily use them in analysis because it could be taken as withdrawing from the survey, but it can be informative because it can tell you if there's a problem in your survey at a certain point. If everyone's dropping out at a particular place in the survey, maybe there's an issue that your previewing and your test responses didn't show up. So I've got all that set up as I want it to be. I'm gonna give them a week to finish up. Uh, and then the other thing I wanna look at is distributions here. Now this is where I find my survey link. So here I can get a single reusable link and this is what a Qualtrics survey link looks like. I can do some things with that survey link and I'm gonna show you that in a future video. But for now, this is the link that you use to send it out to people. There are some other things you can do. You can email things to people if you have a list of people in your contacts, say people that have signed up to take part in your research. There are personal links that you can give people here, which can be useful for a variety of reasons. We won't talk about that today. Um, and some other options here too. You could get a QR code that can take you to the survey too. But for now, most of you will use an anonymous link all the time. So that's how you get your link to send out to people. In future videos, I'll talk about dealing with lists of people. Say you're going to follow people up over time with a number of surveys, rather than having to email them directly from your mailing account, you can do it from this contacts list in Qualtrics. But that's basically how you send a survey out for most people is just email them this anonymous survey link. That's it for this video. In the last video um, in this series, I'll show you about closing down a survey and how to download your data and what your data look like. See you in that one.